So in this video I'm going to show you how to color grade in DaVinci Resolve 18 when you're a beginner. So as you can see I've got some clips in my timeline right here. And when we want to start color grading we go to the color tab. And now we have all the clips that are in the timeline right here and we can click on them and change everything that we want on them. And here we have our notes. I can't explain very good how they work, but you can imagine them working a little bit like adjustment clips. I can make new notes by pressing Option S or Alt S on Windows. And as you can see, this footage was shot and locked, so we need to convert it back. And we don't want to make our adjustments after the conversion, otherwise it would be like you shot in Rec. 709, so it wouldn't make sense. So we put our Rec. 709 conversion at the end of the note graph. For that, I make a new note and pull it right there. And now we go to the effects tab and then you can search or you can type in color space transform and we pull it on the last note, the note all the way at the end. And this was shot in S log 2 so input color space is S gamut, Sony S gamut, input gamma is Sony S log 2, output color space is Rec. 709 and for output gamma you can choose Gamma 2.4 or Rec. 709, it's exactly the same, so it's not making any differences. That's how you convert your S-Log footage to Rec. 709. When you shoot in any other log format, you can choose that here. Like when you shot in V-Log L, you can choose Panasonic V-Gamut and for input Gamma V-Log. But this was shot in S-Log, so we choose that. So now it's important that you start color correcting your footage before you start color grading. That's very important. And for that I make a new note. We only need three of them, so it's four in total. And now we start naming them. The last one is CST, so color space transform. The first one should be for exposure, second is balance, and the third one is look. And now you can see we have parade, waveform, and vector scope and everything here. I'm not going to explain how they work, for that you should watch another video. So first we make our exposure adjustments. For that we have those weirds here, lift, gamma, and gain. If you see shadow, midtone and highlight, you need to click on these here, so that you have those here. The difference between our primary wheels, so lift, gamma and gain, and our log wheels, shadow, midtone and highlights is, in the log wheels you can change the range of those wheels. For example, I pulled on the shadow, and now we pull up the range. You can see how it's affecting more of the image, so it's going more in the midtone. And if you just want to affect the lowest point, so the black points, you pull down the range, so it's affecting less. The same is for the up range for the highlights and in between is the midtone, so that's the difference. But for now we're using lift gamma gain and offset and because we want to change the exposure we're using the offset wheel first, it's like exposure. Now we can increase the contrast and if we want to be more specific we can change the lift, gamma and gain so you have more control about your contrast and I think that looks pretty good. Maybe push up the gain a bit pull down the lift a little bit and that's kind of perfect. By the way you can make your scopes a little bit brighter if you want. So if we want to make white balance adjustments we go to the balance node that I just made and I think that looks kind of neutral so we don't have to make adjustments but when you have to make white balance adjustments you can go to your offset wheel and change it into the direction that you want. So if it's to green you push it more to magenta. So now I'm going to copy those notes by pressing Command C or Control C on Windows and Command V or Control V and we reset those exposure notes on all those clips. So for this clip we change the exposure of course again, pull it down a bit because it's too bright, lift, gain, and pull down the gamma a bit, that looks pretty good. That's before and that's after our exposure adjustments so it's making a huge difference. In this clip we have to be careful because it's in the dark and it's locked so we pull down the gain a bit, push up the gamma a bit, maybe pull down the lift a little bit, and that's fine. So now we go back to our first clip and now we can increase saturation about 65, on the second clip about 60, the third clip maybe around 62, I'm gonna check the vector scope if we have too much saturation and that's fine for this clip. So now that we color corrected our footage we can start color grading and now if you want to use a LUT like one of my LUTs you can make a new node after color space transform, choose one of those LUTs, in this case I'm using one of the LUTs from my LUT pack, link is in the description. You can even go to the LUTs tab here and then you can go on them with your mouse and you see how they look. 
and when there is a LUT that you like, you double click on them and now you edit a LUT. But in this case, I'm going to color grade this footage manually. For that, we need to think what we want to change. I think a teal and orange look would fit this picture. For that, I push the CST away a little bit so that we have more space. Push the look up and then option P for a parallel node. And now we name this one hue. And now we can go to the hue curves. And now I'm going to change the hue so that we get a kind of like teal and orange look. Pull it up a little bit. It's important that you don't affect the skin tone in a negative way. So we make our point right here so that we just affect the yellows. Then we pull up the blues. Maybe yeah, pull up the greens a little bit. You can't see it that much. But even those small changes made a huge difference. Now I can start increasing the saturation of the yellow. But keep an eye on the vector scope so that you don't oversaturate your footage. Now we go make a point here and make a point there. Now we pull it up. So we got some separation going on here. And now in the look node, we can go back to our primary wheels. And now I'm going to pull down the lift, push the gamma to the orange tones. We need to adjust our black points. For that we go to the lock wheels. And because I explained it earlier, you know how they work. We can pull the shadow up so it's balanced. I think we can push our lift down a little bit more. We go back to the lock wheels. Now I pull it up a bit. Now I'm going to deactivate those nodes, all the color grading nodes, before and after. And as you can see, we made a little bit of a teal and orange look. We can even go back to the look node and pull some warmth into the gain so the image looks more like summer. Now we can deactivate everything. That's where we started and this is where we are right now. So in the next clip we are going to do the same parallel node, name it hue. Now we go back to our hue curves, make a few points here again and now we can pull up the yellow, make a point here at the skin tones. It's between the yellows and reds, by the way. We move our green point and pull it down a bit. Before and after. Not a huge difference, but the smaller differences make the huge difference at the end. Pull up the blues, pull down our teals. Now we can increase some saturation here. Increase yellow saturation. And now we can either way increase the saturation of the blue which doesn't make a huge difference because we don't have that much of a blue here. Or we can pull it down and desaturate the color a bit. And now we go back to the look node, back to the primary wheels and do the same. Pull down the lift and push up the gamma, maybe even more. Pull down the lift even more and push up the gamma more. And now we go to the lock wheels and correct our black point. So now that's, that's before and that's after, it's not making a huge difference. So we go back to the hue node and pull up the yellows even more so that we see a huge difference. I wouldn't do that normally, but just for this video, we pull it up even more so that we can see a huge difference. Now we adjust the saturation a bit. And now I make an adjustment node because I want to have more contrast. We go to our custom curves, pull down the shadows, pull up the gain a bit. Now can pull up the black point a bit, go back a little bit so it's not too strong. That's the difference just of those custom curves. And this is where we started at the beginning. And this is where we are right now. So it's an extremely huge difference. In this video, because it's pretty dark, we can make a huge color grading. So we're just going to use the look node, go to our primary wheels and maybe pull down the lift a little bit and pull up the gamma, go to the lock wheels That's before, that's after.
that's it with this video. If you want to learn how to color grade iPhone footage, you can click on this video right now and we're gonna see us in the next video. Thanks for watching.